Hello everyone, my name is Dave Savard. I'm managing attorney in our UAW FCA Ford General Motors Legal Services Plan Office in Wayne, Michigan. We're here today to talk about ladybird deeds. Ladybird deeds are a special deed that conveys ownership of your property to your chosen beneficiaries upon your death without the need for probate. They're, the nickname is Ladybird Deed. They're sometimes called beneficiary deeds, but legally they're known as an enhanced life estate deed. The nice thing about a Ladybird Deed is you keep full ownership and control over your property during your lifetime, but you are adding beneficiaries that will take it upon your death outside of the probate. Now this special deed is not available in all of your states, in all of the states, so it's important that you talk to your uh, staff attorney or plan attorney about that uh, we're available to discuss whether or not it'll work in your particular state. So the sample Ladybird deed language that goes on a deed is, it's a deed from you to you for your lifetime with unrestricted power to convey the property during your lifetime. You could sell it, mortgage it, lease it, gift it, retain the proceeds. This language is right on the deed. And the way it works then is if John Jones or you in particular have not conveyed the property prior to your death, then the property is conveyed to those you name on the deed as your beneficiaries, your children in most cases. The general advantages to the deed are that you keep the right to sell the property at any time. You retain full ownership. In some cases, people would add children to deeds as co-owners. That could be, present a problem for the reason that if you make a child a co-owner with you at the present time, then they would have to sign deeds if you were going to sell the property. If they got into any, any particular legal issues like a bankruptcy or lawsuits, then your property could get tangled up in a mess that they were to get into. With the Ladybird deed, you avoid that because you remain the sole owner of the property. They get it only upon your death. They don't have any present interest. You also have the advantage of retaining the ownership as it is or to change it. So you could change the beneficiaries at any time. Uh, you're free to do anything you'd like with the property. You have full ownership and control. Now there are certain uh, tax advantages as well to the Ladybird deeds. When you do a Ladybird deed, it isn't considered a gift because you're not giving anybody a current or, or present interest in the property. They get it upon your death. So you're avoiding any gift tax consequences. Anytime a person makes a gift of over $15,000, they may have to file gift tax returns on that property. So with the Ladybird deed, they are not getting the property until after you pass away, so there isn't any future or any present gift. It's a future gift that they get. Also, the uh, beneficiaries would take the property uh, with the value upon your death for capital gain uh, possibility. So when you pass on, they get the property at that time. They get the stepped up basis on the property. So they are, if they turn right around and sell the property, they will uh, not have to pay any capital gain uh, taxes if the property is sold for the value date of death. There are also some Medicaid advantages to this uh, type of setup with a ladybird deed. A lot of uh, state planners uh, dealing with long-term care issues or Medicaid nursing home issues use this particular deed. The reason is, is that it doesn't jeopardize your eligibility for Medicaid. You are the, co are the current owner of the property. You retain ownership of the property. If you add the children as beneficiaries, then upon your death, they will get the property at that time, so you are not making a current gift. It's not subject to those Medicaid rules like the five-year look back and, uh, and any of those types of issues that come up. When there's a Medicaid application, they look at all of your assets, bank accounts, automobiles, and real estate as well, and if the property is in your name, well, then you're eligible for Medicaid uh, as far as the home goes. If you add children on as co-owners, that could be considered to be a gift. And as we talked about before, when you make a gift, well, then there are certain issues that come into play for taxes as well as Medicaid eligibility. Now, in some states, the Lady Bird deed uh, will protect the property from any estate recovery after you die. So what happens there is, is that upon the uh, death of the person, then they, the children will get the property automatically outside of probate, 
And most Medicaid applications uh, will have no problems at all when it comes to state recovery if the property goes directly to the beneficiaries outside of probate. Now there's some other disadvantages that come into play here as well that you should be aware of. Uh, what, what happens here is where you have a number of multiple beneficiaries, say, it works well if you have just a couple of children, but if you have six or eight children, say, then all of them will get the property upon your death, but there won't be one person in charge of the sale. So that can cause some problems if they're not in agreement. If you have a situation where, where six or eight kids get the property, they may not agree on what's to be done with the property, and that could delay uh, the situation with a sale or any other possibilities where maybe you'd have to end up in a court to get that issue resolved. Some of the other disadvantages that sometimes come into play depends on how the deed is set up. So in some cases if the beneficiary uh, has died they may that particular share let's say we have Tom, Dick and Harry the share of Tom if he has died may not go the way you want it. It may not go to his children. So you have to make sure that you set it up the way that you want it, and those are things that we would discuss. So the deed uh, will set it up the way that you want it, either joint tenants, full rights of survivorship, or tenants in common. Those particular issues can be discussed with your attorney, and then that way you make sure that the beneficiary interest goes the way that you would want it. There's also some issues, too, with ladybird deeds if you were to want to borrow against the home to get a home equity loan or to take out a mortgage on the home. Some banks are reluctant to give loans to owners that have ladybird deeds. They don't like the idea of other parties uh, there on the deed. So in many cases what's required is that you have to get the ladybird deed revoked, put back into your own name, and then you can go on ahead with the loan. After that loan has happened you can always redo the ladybird deed. The other thing that's important to understand too is that with a ladybird deed the heirs are going to take the pro property subject to any liens that there might be on the property. So if there's a mortgage loan, a home equity loan, home equity loan, the children will get the property, but they will take it subject to that loan. So what will typically happen in that case is they will sell the property, they will then pay off that loan, and then split up the proceeds. It's important to also understand that the Ladybird deed is a part of your entire estate plan. So when we do estate plans, we're typically doing uh, wills, powers of attorney, ladybird deeds may a part, be a part of that. It's important to understand that any time you put somebody's name on something, like a ladybird deed as a beneficiary, bank accounts, life insurance, they all work the same way. That property will go to the designated beneficiary and that will trump the will. The will, even if it says it goes to three kids on, on that particular will, the ladybird deed that leaves it to one child, that will control. So it's important that you coordinate your estate plan and make sure that it's consistent and understand that when you do these beneficiary designations, that will supersede a will. So we hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation. I hope it's been informative. It's your plan. You can open up a case with the UAW Legal Service Plan by contacting 1-800-482-7700. We'd be happy to discuss this and any other legal issues with you to determine if it's right for you. Thank you very much for listening today.